It's nice to be walking in North Beach and somebody says, hey, how you doing, Professor Coppola? How you doing, Christopher? It's like, you know, it feels good, like you're wanted. That was filmmaker and educator Christopher Coppola. I'm Jeff, and this is Storied San Francisco. In this podcast, Christopher picks up where he left off in part one. He talks about the decision to leave a college up north and finish his education in the city at the San Francisco Art Institute, where he teaches today. After graduation, various forces vied for influence over the young filmmaker, his family, his teachers at SFAI, and Hollywood types. In the end, Christopher forged his own cinematic path. Most recently, he made the short Sammy and Quinn, starring his two sons. We end this podcast with his thoughts on what it means to still be making movies in and about San Francisco. Here's Christopher. Though I started getting annoyed, you know, over time, get a little annoyed. Like, they didn't really have, uh, like, what I felt in Long Beach was a very blue-collar town. Like, right. everybody's in aerospace. They're not going to the school. For, they're not. And I felt a little bit like there was a judgment you know, mm. from uh, against that. Mm-hmm. Not everybody, but I could kind of feel it, you know. Here. Here in San right. Francisco. Right. And that kind of bugged me okay. yeah, a little bit. I, but So that's why I say, I, like, I, I like both. Yeah. You know, and so I went to the University of Redlands when I was 16, School of Music. I could only stay uh, for a couple of years because I lost my, my scholarship, uh, even though I had a great grade point average. But because of my last name, they assumed I had money, which I didn't. So mm. I went to somebody else. And mm-hmm. if you do this, I can't. Yeah. I can't, I can't I'm going to have to go, which mm-hmm. I did. And I worked like five jobs. And then my dad said, we got to call uh, my friend Stephen Goldstein. He's mm-hmm. the president of uh, the San Francisco Art Institute. And, and <laughs> I tell this to Stephen. He said he's the smartest man I know on paper. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he is. Yeah. Anyway, he became like, he's still around. I'm going to see him tomorrow, but he's like a, another father to me of San Francisco. Yeah. So he said, well, Christopher, you know, come on up. Take a look at, for college, film. Um, and, you know, you do a little teaching, maybe music. And then, you know, we get you a scholarship and you can finish up here. So I, 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 I flew up. I wore my suit and tie. Oh, he, the president, he's a little rabbit, picks me up. Really sweet guy. We both love each other and know a lot about classical music. But he takes me to the school. And this is uh, what 1981. Year is okay. So uh, I walk into the courtyard there, and there are these two guys with mohawks smoking dope. Mm-hmm. And I'm right out of like a really conservative music school. I'm wearing my tie. <laughs> and they see me, and they go... Oh, wow. <laughs> and I said, what am I in for here? But then I met George, and I met all these people. Go, yeah, I, I like this. So I moved up here, and so I, and I went to school here. So yeah. even though I'd go down, I was mainly up here for three years. Okay. So I have that relationship where I got my BFA in San Francisco. Okay. Where did you live when you... When I first... I moved around a lot. I was first in the lower height, which was weird. Um, uh it's before it was called Hayes Valley and all yeah, that. Yeah, it was the lower, it was, it was on a... Uh, uh, before that ha- was gentrified. Hayes Street. Yeah. But like... The freeway was still there. All that. Yeah. Uh, but where was it? It was... Uh, 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 is that... What? East of um, uh, Fillmore. Mm-hmm. Lower Hayes. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, I uh, rented a place with this woman writer... And I never had a roommate before. Mm-hmm. And she, you know, there was this, it was $150, you know, I got, she gave me two rooms. Did you find the roommate, like, here on no, the No, 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 I you... was looking around. I just oh. needed to find a place quickly. In the paper, maybe? Or... I can't even remember. But not Craigslist. Not, this was wasn't way before that. that. Maybe, maybe there was something on the wall, board, board. something yeah, maybe yeah. I, I saw. I can't remember. But she was okay. a writer. Um, and uh, I was there for a little while. And then, and then I, it got a little odd. It didn't, I don't know, you know. Woman not used to living, you know, a little odd. Yeah. Um, no, nothing bad and great respect. So then I wanted to find my own place, so I went to Hayes, Hayes Valley. Okay. And then. Uh, Hayes and uh, what cross street? Uh, God, what is that? Hayes. It was right across from a, from a, a elementary school. I think it would be west of Divisadero. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, in that area. Down near Masonic? Yeah, not John Adams. in that area. Yeah. In that, I, mean, I could walk to that panhandle uh, yeah, part of Golden Gate. Yeah, I yeah. think that's a city college campus now. It used to be an elementary school. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's Hayes where I was. There was a weird little cafe, which I always like, a little cafe that was at the corner, which kind of had like a hippie, like melted wood candle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and they made French onion soup. And oh, so fuck I yeah. thought, okay, well, great. this will be my little French onion soup place. Totally. Yeah. Uh, but after that, uh, I don't know what happened. You know, you get tired of places. And mm-hmm. then the, the, oh, a student here, uh, Robert Gardner, who, who was in my film, we had a real kind of close-knit group of film students that worked closely together. He mm-hmm. was one of them. And uh, actually, later tonight, I'm going to go meet with Panos, who was one of them, who's from Greece. Okay. We're kind of reminiscing about what the school was like, which is... A lot cooler then than it is now. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. So, yeah. But anyhow, uh, uh, he um, said, hey, Christopher, you know, and he had this really cute Icelandic girlfriend. And, and said, Christopher, you know, I'm living in this place up in the Upper Hay on Downey Street, up in Hay. And it's like this landlord that doesn't really know. She only charges like 200 to your own place. And you might really like it. She's looking mm-hmm. for somebody. And so, yeah, I loved it, you know. And so I moved there. I, I was heard a it was a rough neighborhood back then. No, I no, didn't think so. Not bad. I didn't think so. I mean, hay was weird back then. Yeah. Like, I'd go to the Red Vic. Right. And there was always a grand piano was right across the place where mm-hmm. you could get your stuff. It, it had a little... No, the I, here's what's interesting. But the, the, the most fights as a young teenager I've ever been in mm-hmm. were in San Francisco right. than anywhere else. I got... In bars or just... No, no. As just, a kid, I was, in, I was <clears> in Chinatown in that main square park. Yeah. And we were in the park... And the, and the little Chinese kids didn't like us being in their park, and they mm-hmm. told us to get out. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay. So I get my my brothers and us to go up there. And my aunt says, what are you doing? I said, well, we don't. They don't want us in their park. It's like this is America. You get your asses back down there. <laughs> I'm like, well, Aunt Ellie, I'm the oldest. I don't really think they want us there. It's yeah. Like, if you're not wanted, why even be there? Yeah. It's just I don't care. This is America. You get your ass back down there. My sure God. enough, we're back down there. They start throwing things at us. <laughs> I even have a scar in the back of my head, which you could see, which was from like either a shuriken or something, and it's stuck in my head and it's bleeding. Whoa. And and I go, I go, Ellie, I'm bleeding. She's like, get back. I go, no, this I got to get a hair stitch. Mother aunt's uh, yeah, in, tough. Insta- instigation. Instigation. Jeez. So that was like a big battle. Yeah. Then in college, in college here, I took the bus and I took the Fillmore. What was that called? The 92 Fillmore back then? Or 22. Something? 22. That's right. 22. 22. So I took the 22 to get to my lower. <laughs> hey, and I'm on there with my friend Alfonso from Cuba, who's also in the group. And we're just by ourselves. And I, you know, I fenced. I was, I mean, I was real, I was only 140 pounds, but I, you know, I had a little, little Bruce Lee thing going. Yes. And so these kids get on the bus and they're, you know, all wearing frames without glasses, like mm-hmm. Clark Kent. Mm-hmm. And I could tell it was some kind of gang, you know, and it was, you know, it was basically an African-American gang because it was going so big, but that's, that's what it was. And so they looked at us and there was this old woman in the front that, they started going after to oh, get her purse, yeah. and and uh, and I don't remember who it was, any old woman. And so I got intervened. I, I was a little pumped, you know. I was like, "Yeah, you're not going to do that." Right. And so I got into it with them, and they immediately kicked. And it just was, it, you, well, against many. Yeah, it was just me. Just, it was about okay. eighteen of them, and it was oh, me, God. and I was I was twenty, one hundred and fifty pounds. With my friend Alfonso, who, as soon as he was kicked in the face, was out of commission. Yeah. But I, I kept going. Okay. I kept going. I kept doing it and, and taking them down. And, and the, then the bus driver saw it and slammed on the brakes, and I fell. And then, you know, I'm the one white guy on the whole bus, right. you know. So it, it, was, it had nothing to do with it. I would have done the same thing if it was a white group of people doing that. It had nothing to do with it, which I tried to explain to them. Right. You just don't, don't do rob it. an elderly person. Yeah. It's right. just wrong. Right. It's just wrong. So then he took a pipe at me and it really beat the crap oh, out of geez. me. Oh, jeez. And uh, then these police came on, and they were black too, and they didn't do anything. Mm. So I walk off the bus, and with Alfonso, I was like, oh, man, I'm bleeding everywhere. And this one stupid kid, man, he reaches, he spits at me and reaches out. I grab his arm, and the bus goes off. I don't let go. Oh, and geez. I hear a, oh, because I broke his arm. Oh, my I, said, God. I feel good now. 
I feel good. And I walked around. I went to a bar in Divisadero, and I'm the one white guy. But they all say, hey, man, come on in. I'm like, thank you, man. I got beat up. I need some ice. Yeah. And they gave it to me. So it, had nothing, it was like, it was weird, but that was a big fight. That's pretty, in yeah. In San Francisco. Yeah. You wouldn't expect that. It moved around. It was a mobile fight. It was a, the bus was going. <laughs> and we, were, we were trying to surf and stuff. Yeah. But what's what that class is? Yeah. That was their, their signature. They were Clark Kent without lenses. Right. Huh. It was kind of weird. I've never heard of that one, yeah, but there yeah. you go. But anyhow, that's that's uh, my. There's been some other ones, but I've always been in charge. That's your youth. That's my so, youth. So, so then, did you graduate from? I graduated from here. Okay. Um, which is one of the really nicest things. My little brother. He's done some nice things. We don't. We don't. We're not so close now because of the death of our mother. But mm. g- great mutual respect. He's awesome. But um, um, I remember graduating. And it was uh, in December, and nobody came, nobody was there. Nobody. Right. And my brother calls, goes, "What's what's going on?" He goes, "I'm great." He's like, "You mean nobody's there? Dad's not there?" Well, I'm flying up. Oh. And he did, and we went out for we went to the, it was a restaurant on Lombard called the Boar's Head or something. Yeah. Yeah. And he took me there, and we ate boar, and it meant so much to me. You know, awesome. Like he came to celebrate me from graduating. So. I've all I've never forgotten that he was the one you know that came up and he loves he bought the place which is a whole nother story <laughs> with, the, with the dragon fire I, I spent many a nights at that place yeah on Franklin, so but I might be he has the same relationship in many ways from our childhood a to the city percent, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he doesn't live or work or do much here no, he doesn't do anything yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually you know, I don't know the reasons why I think it may be more because it's you know Northern Coppolaville. Yeah. Not that he has any problems with that, but he likes, this is my town. Right. Las Vegas is my town. So I wanted to actually go backwards. I usually do chrono- chronological, but um, I wanted to hear a little bit about, like, how did your dad and his brothers and his family end up down in Southern California? Were they from there? Like, which, no, my dad which actually was came down over? there before Francis, before okay. Francis was even making movies. My okay. dad is, like, much older. And we can thank my mother's mother, Dee, okay. <laughs> because she moved there from Illinois. Uh, they say for hay fever, but it was for Hollywood. Okay. And she had a house uh, on 733 North Sierra Bonita, which became kind of legend because my grandpa, who was, who was so sweet, a great carpenter, he was also the guy who would cut steaks, and people like Clark Gable would go to the mm. steak place and, and buy his cuts. Wow. He was a little guy, but man, it was so sweet. But anyway, Is your grandfather did, on your mom's side? Mom's side. Got it. Yeah. I, I was very close to him, not so close with the other one. Got it. But love him, but a whole different animal. Not more, let's say, selfish, I'm God, unless we're all in it together, Grandpa. Got it. You know, when you have someone that <laughs> you're little and you, you're staying with it because you have to because your dad's gone, you're staying with your, uh, your paternal grandparents, and there's a, there's a uh, tray that has martini glass, which I love. We, martinis are big in the family, and, and he made a good martini. Um, but anyhow, there was a, 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 a drawing of Beethoven's face you know bust okay and it was in gold and my little brother says hey grandpa who's that goes, oh that's beethoven he's like well, what did he do ah, he was a composer well was he any good not as good as i and he was serious oh god yeah he was serious <laughs> right because that's that's a different grandpa yes <laughs> definitely. And my dad once says you know you know, i studied music and he goes hey dad you know christopher you know he's he's your grandma he's studying music there can only be one composer in the family <laughs> what, what did my dad tell him there is yet to be a great one Ooh. <laughs> so there's a lot of that yeah but on my german side you know it's more like we're all in it together we take care of each other no one falls through the cracks everybody you know it's just there were other issues, but it was a completely different ball game. So, and that uh, grandfather made steak or cut steaks. You yeah, said. that's what he cut. He he was a he went from a coal miner to somebody that went to Hollywood because his m- wife wanted to because of hay fever. But my, no, sure, sure. But everybody was going to Chicago because starts of with an H. <laughs> yeah, but anyhow, uh, yeah. So he started working in meats and stuff, and they had their own market, the Vogelsang Market, okay. which uh, they had in Chicago, which was a mom and pop store that everybody loved. Very, mo- and they opened one up on Melrose, which is now this old hip place. My mom went to Fairfax. My point is, is that my grand, my my grandpa built this guest cottage. Everybody's been there. 
Okay. And my mom at Francis lived there going to UCLA. Sean Penn was there. Johnny Depp was there. Crispin Glover, me. It kind of became like this secret little place to stay, mm-hmm. you know, which obviously she loved. Oh, this is great, you know, but she'd make them apple pancakes. So, but the reason why is my, my dad was going to UCLA and met, you know, my mom at UCLA and that's what he got, you know, that is why Francis came That's to go how to your UCLA, parents met. Okay. and then he lived back there, okay. you know, and so it was really my dad that that did the L.A. thing, right. out of that family, his, his, his uh, I'm not sure when his father came to Woodland Hills, but that was when it all happened, because yeah. it was basically out of New York, you know, everybody was right. out of New York. Right, right. Uh, like uh, Italy via New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, my grandpa was born in New York. Okay. Yeah, so it's very much Italian American, even yeah. though the, they, you like if you look at the Scorsese film and Italian cinema, which is a beautiful documentary. So is the personal journey through American cinema, but particularly the Italian when he talks about growing up and how each little area in Little Italy was like a village, yeah. just like it was in Italy. So right. it really kind of was. You know, a lot of my family was from there and they moved in, but. Wow. And maybe my grandfather was born. I don't. I don't remember. Okay. My memory's gone. Let's get back then. Now, thank you for that for indulging me on that. Um, <laughs> let's get back to now. You graduated college. Your brother came up yeah. uh, for the graduation. Yeah. Now what? For well, you. Oh, this is interesting. This was interesting. You'll, you'll like this. Uh, while I was here, I made a few award-winning art films. I don't like even, everything to me. If you take it seriously, is artful. Art. You know, right. I, I I I love the Evil Knievel movie with George Hamilton. Yeah, uh, of course I'm going to say that's arty. You right. Know, I, mean, I like the guy that made the Kentucky Turd Bird out in Kentucky and sells that. I mean, you have to think about the. I mean, Barnum. Mm-hmm. I, you know, there's a lot of artistry in there, so I, I don't judge that kind of stuff. But um, I made these films, and maybe they were a little pretentious. But uh, my brother's agent really liked them, and uh, said, "Why isn't Christopher like doing Hollywood, man? I mean, hmm. It's like the next." There's nobody else. I mean, Sophia's really little. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm studying film, so it's kind of like, yeah, let's get Christopher going. In this. Mm-hmm. And I, and I really didn't have any interest. But I was. I did, I made my first like 30 minute movie, Palmer's Pickup, which was a black comedy. And I'm like, God, I, I wouldn't mind doing a feature. But we're talking celluloid. You know, it's not like that. <sighs> right. It costs a lot of money. Yep. Tape. So by, they're saying, well, Christopher, you know, you go down there, you, know, you get the money, you make features, you know, mm. and like at least give it a try. Mm-hmm. And, and I said, oh, okay, yeah, let's do it. So I got this agent, and then immediately, uh, I'm only 25, I just left, I get a call about doing a movie for Dino De Laurentiis, right out of art school. Okay. Right? Well, a year in between getting ready. Still, but, big deal. But it was kind of quick. I was younger than Francis when he had his first film, put it right. that way. Okay. Uh, and maybe, I think I was too young. I think it was probably a mistake. But maybe mm-hmm. not, things happen for a reason. And mm-hmm. actually the film, you know, it aged as well. Mm-hmm. But uh, um, I did that and I started realizing a little bit that I was kind of being tailored to be like maybe mm-hmm. the next Coppola in Hollywood because mm-hmm. there wasn't anybody yet. I was that next person. Tailored by Meaning like you got the agent this, agents, or agents, producers. You know, not so much from Francis and Nicholas, but a little bit, a yeah. little bit. Like these are things you have to do. This is over the top. You know, you really got to be better with actors. Uh, you, you know, filmmaking is basically just actors and script. Uh, and I'm like, well, well, I learned everything but camera and music, you know. <laughs> and to me, they all kind of go together, you know. Mm-hmm. But So it was a little different. But I did the film, and it was very difficult. I, I always wore a suit and tie uh, because it showed respect to the crew. And then there was this whole thing, like, you know, from Dino De Laurentiis, like, I want watermelons. I have no idea what he's talking about. Yeah. I want watermelons. Okay. I'm like, well, sir, um, what is it? He goes, oh, big breasts. I go, I, oh. I'm like... I don't, you want nudity? You know, he's like, yeah. And I'm like, and this is like this old pirate. Yeah. And I'm like right out of art school playing with colors. And, and I, Francis says, as long as it's scary, you can do anything in horror, which was a good mm-hmm. thing. So I had all these EC comics and color plates and worked with this great Italian DP because it was, it was all in North Carolina who was um, Fellini's camera operator, which was, oh my God, Fellini's camera operator. But you know, I started like, I, could, I felt like a cheesy. 
And there was a whole thing with this woman on a rack with her breasts, and she could see her enhancements, and it was like, and she's so happy to be in the movie. She's like, oh, thank you for, and I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> but at the same time, George Kuchar, like he was all, Christopher, Christopher, you know, my teacher's like, this is great, this is great, just go for it, go for it. Yeah. And so, you know, during that, even the cinematographer, because, oh, this was good. I, I had talked to Isabella Rossellini, you know, about playing Dracula's As widow. As you do. Mm-hmm. Well, she said, yeah, so you want me to play a vampire? I mean, this is a long time ago. Right. You know, Blue Velvet time. Okay. And so I, uh, I, I said, oh, man, she's perfect. You know, and then Dino Reeder says, no, no, Sylvia Christel. Sylvia Christel, Emmanuel, soft porn? Right. Yeah, because she still has guys at Digger, and that's mm-hmm. an audience. So he's, a, you know, he's that guy. A businessman. You business deal with yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, yeah. this is where it becomes interesting for me yeah. because I'm just stunned. Yeah. I'm, and so people saw me like I'm throwing meat on the walls, preparing, <laughs> I'm you know, spraying blood everywhere. <laughs> right. I look very sad, right? You know. Um, uh, and Beppe's like, "What's the matter?" So I just never thought it would come to this. <laughs> you, know? you know, I'm not used to this, Beppe. And I said, "He goes, what are we going?" He goes, "What do you want to do about Sylvia's?" face it's you know not as glamorous as dino thinks it is mm-hmm. but she was great and i had it she was i had to design a kim novak outfit for her so her body as i say you can't you're not gonna it's not fair to her at this age to start making her like she's a sex symbol right she had that period she was 16 or 17 right this, now she's much older why would you even do that? let's just let her make her an interesting character but you know she wanted her face to have a certain radiance. Okay. And so I said to Bambi, he was like, you want me to use this filter? I go, no, 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 no. Now let's use what I learned at the San Francisco Art Institute with my teacher, George. He's like, what's that? Get, get me a, a, a silk stocking and get a, a silver Sharpie and, and paint the stocking and just put it over the lens. And Bambi's oh. like, what the f- what are you talking about, Christopher? What is, it's, <laughs> I have lenses. And, and so, but he does it and we look at it and he goes like, oh. What does that do? It just gives that Hollywood diffusion, that uh, kind of little extra glamour. Right. It removes the wrinkles. Yeah. It just like, you know. Smooths things. Yeah, but it makes it edges. kind of like, like you know, in, in, not, in, in a not hokey way, but the good fairy, uh, good witch, and, you know, Wizard of Oz. Yeah. You know, kind the, of, a glow. Yeah, yeah, a little, a, little a, a glow. But anyway, the point was is that I actually used something from my school in this film. Right. So now, smash cut later, I've done, I've done 11 features. I, I, I'm constantly panned. I don't really care anymore. You know, it, it, I do what I do. But they said, well, what would you think about Dino now as a producer? I go, oh, I totally get it. He's like uh, a little pirate. I'd say, Dino, you want watermelons? I'll give you fucking watermelons, <laughs> but you let me do this. I get it. You want your fucking watermelons, Roger Corman? No problem. How many do you want? You know, uh, how many on a rack? Just tell me that. But you got to give me these things. So I'm more like that now. Right. Though, but now at 60, I look at, like, what do I want to leave in the world? So not so much, but, right. you know, I... I, I, in other words, I don't have any problem with the pirate. I did then. Right. But when I think about him now, well, yeah, like you said, just a businessman. You know? Now you've become the pirate. Actually, actually, if I was me, or maybe five years ago then, I would probably have a lot better time. Right. That's why I mean. Maybe I was too young. You know? Exactly. Probably had a lot better time making that movie. Um, in the interests of time, I know, I know. we're going to have to, I mean, and I, I knew this coming in, yeah, yeah, we're going to yeah. have to skip over a lot of sure. your life. You have enough interesting stories about that. Oh, for stuff. sure. Okay. And we're, we're like 10, 10, okay. 15 Yeah, so narrow it left. down for me. Narrow it down. No, no. Hone um, me in. Focus yeah. me. Bring in the line. Bring I, in the line. I'm Tell super, me in. I'm super curious about a couple things. Maybe your personal life. You have some kids. I actually right. don't feel good in L.A. when I go down there. I just feel like it's not what I remember. Right. And I don't really feel good about San Francisco in some ways with the gentrification. But we'll, I get to, say, we'll get to that part. Yeah, but yeah. I will say it's nice to be walking in North Beach and somebody says, Hey, how you doing, Professor Coppola? How you doing, Christopher? It's like, you know, it feels good. Like you're wanted. I guess that's what it, I feel more wanted in San Francisco. And I don't feel that just because of who I'm related to. Right. I just feel like I've earned a place, you know, in North Beach, Mm -hmm. coming here and I go to Trieste, we talk. Mm. So in my own right, I've earned my, St. Christopher has earned his own right to be here, even though he was de-sainted. We know that, right? (laughs) (laughs) But does that explain it? You know, I I think the cities shaped us differently and, and being in the film business, is not always a pretty thing. Right. And uh, I don't think it's for everybody, especially 
But does that answer the family thing? For sure. My students uh, are my family. Kind right. Of, uh, you know. Yeah. Did your son, is, is it just the two sons? Two sons. And yeah. did they grow up up here, down no, there? No, no, all down in L.A. Down there. Yeah. Okay. They're all um, L.A. kids. You kind of touched on it a little bit, but... Um, they are in one of your newer movies, well, this is your newest movie. Yeah. But the reason why this happened was that. Well, I think on Bitch Talk, your younger son remind me his no, name. No, he's my eldest. Well, no, but but one of them uh, is a baseball player. Yeah, that's my youngest. He's yeah. awesome. He, and, and like, doesn't have much interest in acting. Or he's really good, but he doesn't want to. He does. That's and he won. How he's, no, it was a mistake. But he won a, a Best Actor or won Bailey won out of Germany. And I, I mean, he, it, without Dexter with Bailey, you know, it wouldn't be the same. Right. But he uh, he doesn't know that's Bailey's gig. And okay. Like, and I I might do this, but you know, I got to be careful saying it. Because it might piss off somebody bigger, you know, who I owe a script to, and I do want to make that. And I'd just be idea. happy that they're listening. To yeah, be yeah, okay. Well, they might be, but and, and they already know about this, which is why I have to call somebody at the company to explain how long it's going to take to get a fourth draft done because of this other thing that happened. Mm. But uh, I have a part for Bailey and Dexter in it, and it's this mob guy who came through a long time ago to put some money in my Western to finish. Haven't heard from him. Vinny, I'm on fire, Vegas Tiger Vidmar. I'm on fire! That guy. And I, and I love characters. Yeah. I mean, I'd much rather work with that guy, you right. know, 75 Vegas old school, I'm on fire! And some young <laughs> Wall Street punk in Hollywood that right. was, somehow is able to green light a movie. Right. I'd rather do. So, anyhow, but it's not quite, you know, what everybody else thinks I should be doing. Yeah. <laughs> the reason why it happened this way mm -hmm. is that there's this guy I call the Spaniard, or right? he's a Shakespeare guy. He doesn't drink anymore, but he was a he was a North Beach kind of character, mm -hmm. very smart into literature, very violent drunk. I have to ask what bars. What? What bars? Well, he would go to Spex, Vesuvio, Vesuvio, yeah, 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 and Zoetrope, but yeah. more for the film context. But he would drink, so he saw me there. Mm -hmm. and he was introduced, but so I always hear from him, um, and we would get into it, you know, like what because. I'm actually kind of a nice drunk, but I'm also strong. And he was very violent. So people would say, Chris, you, you got to get him out of here. You got to yeah, get him out of here. Yeah. But anyhow, uh, I stayed in contact with him. And he doesn't drink anymore. So I'm at Trieste, and he goes, hey, Christopher, Cervantes, Cervantes. I'm like, don't. Please don't. Because he <laughs> sucks me into things. I go, don't. don't. Well, OK, what, Cervantes? A movie, Don Quixote, shot in Spain at the actual locations. Oh. Don't. Please don't. <laughs> Students, I go don't. Okay, you know. So I did. <laughs> so basically, I created a class. The first class called Project Great Literature to Art Film, okay. where students got to work here. Here, that is it. Yeah, uh, uh, all, but got to work with their teacher and professionals and see what it's like, but also study great literature, which they don't mm -hmm. know, which mm -hmm. is not their fault. Right. It's not part of it anymore. It's a different, different world. Like when you walk mm -hmm. the streets and they say, what are you doing? I'm saying, I'm making Don Quixote. go, who's that? And right. you, you can take a little offense, but you know, they, of course they don't know. Mm -hmm. So, But anyhow, uh, we were going to do it. He didn't really have the money he said. You were going to do it in Spain. In Spain. Okay. And this was before COVID. Right. And so he really didn't have the money he said he had, which we have issues with, <laughs> which we talk about. But I'm sucked in again. I'm sucked in again with mm -hmm. Othello, which I'm doing. That's mm -hmm. why that exists. Because I, oh. I have Orson Welles on that. But that's a whole other That story. is, can you tell people listening what that is? That yeah, what out? that is is a diamond project screen. And because there is no Othello in his, he lost his Othello. I said, well, we'll just project Orson Welles as a film, uh, and you all have to relate to him. And then you could say, I was in a film with Orson Welles. He was my hero. So, but anyway, that's what that is. Got about. it. So, but, but anyhow, I'm sitting here, and I tell my students, because it says in the course description, they will study Don Quixote with great scholars from Spain, and they will watch me, as a professional filmmaker, make a film and have input, oh. and use that, and, and leave comments, and keep a creativity journal. But COVID hit and he didn't have the money. So I'm sitting there like, I gotta still do something, man. You know, so I have my two sons with me because they're living with me because of COVID, mm -hmm. no reason to go back down. And I know, yeah, I know Bailey goes, well, yeah, I bet Dexter can too. I said, well, just make a short, you know, mm -hmm. and Bailey I don't want to be around anybody. I don't want people <laughs> coming up to me. And I said, look, I'll shoot it all. I'll shoot it, I'll do the sound, there'll be no boom. It'll just be me and my sons, which is how it started. Right. You know, and disaster. I almost think that attitude that he, 
that you just said he took of I don't want any more, that almost kind of works for well, the role. It did. Well, for he, the right, they are playing similar. <laughs> yeah, know? they are very those guys in many many ways. Right, which I was also thinking. Mm -hmm. So I said this is a way to do this. And then I will do it, but but there was no way because they, they bicker as sons and father, and I'm trying to get the shot. And he's learning to gimbal, and I said, no, I got I got to bring in a DP. So I found somebody in San Francisco, Jason Josepher, who I really liked. Yeah. you know him. Well, I don't know him personally, but um, he's good. He, he will probably be listening to this because he follows us. Yeah, and yeah. He, I, I see his name on yeah, like, he did a social great media. Job. And stuff. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, amazing photographer too. Yeah, and unfortunately, really he couldn't finish it, so I had to bring in the Italians to help me finish oh, it. Oh, okay. I think you like but too bad that's what okay. happens yeah. if you can't finish something go the there other you way go. you got to yeah. finish yeah. but anyway i did that and then i my students i said look you know in cervantes he uses novellas to steer the story i want dreams mm -hmm. and i'm going to give you some very specific things that you bring your talent to the exact length the composers has to write it like this the student composers and if they work they'll be in my movie if they don't they won't you can do it if you want but this is a lesson for you to learn mm -hmm. and they did it and i loved it and so that's what you see those little three dreams are all made by students awesome yeah um i want to hear in your words what sammy and quinn was for you i guess uh to san francisco yeah yeah definitely because san francisco is kind of the, like a character it, in the it movie. is a character and that's what yeah. i wanted yeah. and i really wanted san francisco yeah. to be the character and for me it was like a fairy tale a place of hope a place where if you took the journey through magic, you can find magic in little things. Mm -hmm. and, and little things can become very big things. Like a little brother just wanted to hang with his big brother, helps him at the end. And the city and all the places traveling through it kind of are echoing that. Like, keep going. Right. You know, look at this. Take it in. Take it in. So I, I, I'd like that for it, you know. I wanted, because I, I felt that way when I was here as a kid. Right. It was like a sanctuary, you know. And you, you got that, you filmed that during the pandemic. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I don't know exactly where in the pandemic, but like. Always the, the big part. I would say like we're, I mean, there's no denying we're still in it, but it, like shit is still weird. And yet you may, you've may, managed to make a movie about hope and about, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and that's, and that's really what I wanted. And I, I don't think I could have done something like that, that I was really looking for a city to be right. character in any other city. Absolutely. And, and Francis yeah. liked the movie a lot. And he said, yeah, you really did make San Francisco a character. Yeah. Very, very good. I appreciate that. Yeah. Like a love letter, um, it was you a know, love letter to the city, yeah. um, which leads to what will, wrap on um our theme on the show this season is we're still here yeah um you're still here your movie is very still here yeah um what does it mean to you like what why the am heck? i still we, in san francisco we talked about yeah. oh you know gentrification like it, you know there's there's things there's the pandemic there's all the people forced yeah. out the people who chose to leave um gentrification there's any number of yeah, things and, and it's and like despite things, it all yeah uh, they, they, and all those things we're all still here so we're the all heck? still here and all those things exist everywhere <laughs> you know right it's not just Stanford. they exist right. everywhere so you, you can't just put all this judgment in one place though i think you should look at the goods and the bads everywhere and mm -hmm. figure out but i i'm still here because you know i feel like i'm going to a home when i go to cafe trias mm. i feel wanted i i i want them uh and i like that and I don't feel that in many places. So I'm I, maybe I'm using it, you know, to that's, help myself. It's or, community. It's a community. I feel mm. like I am that. I don't live in San Francisco because I think that might ruin it somehow. Mm, I live just outside because coming in, I feel different. When I was living there, there might be other things that kind of get in the way, mm -hmm. and maybe the politics or mm. might ruin those little things. But I don't know. You <laughs> live here. Do you? No comment. <laughs> 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 Anyhow, no, I'm 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 so happy to do this with you. I like what you do. I, I love doing the bitch talk with your wife. Your wife, right? That's right. Yeah, and, we got married last fall. Yeah, and it was funny, and and <laughs> we had a good time, and Bailey had a good time, and um, I think it's good that you do this. Tell stories about a city and get personal, and also make it funny. That was Christopher Coppola. On the next episode of Storied San Francisco, you'll meet photographer Doug Salen. Episode 48, and our next to last of the season, drops next Tuesday wherever you listen to podcasts. Music for the podcast was produced, performed, and curated by Otis McDonald. 
Original photography is by Michelle Kilfeather. Aaron Lim of Bitch Talk Podcast is our contributing producer. And the show is produced and hosted by me, Jeff Hunt. Now in our fourth season, we have more than 190 episodes available on our website, storiedsf.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you can, please rate and review our show so we can reach even more folks. We love email. Drop us a line at storiedsf at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Stay strong, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time on Storied San Francisco. This podcast is a proud member of the BFF.FM podcast network. Learn more at podcast.bff.fm. BFF.FM, best frequencies forever.